and we're back. back. Right, right now, I have, have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. A.C. Dumas. How are you tonight, Mr. Dumas? I'm doing excellent. Okay. Let's start out by you telling the viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm A.C. Dumas, and I'm a candidate for the third ward, Flint City Council. I have lived in the third ward in the same home going on 30 years. Uh, I chose to live in the third ward. Uh, that's my community. That's where I love the third ward. I'm running for third ward city council uh, because I care about third ward in particular and I care about the city of Flint. I'd like to say that I'm the longest uh, resident of the city of Flint that has constantly uh, uh, went to the third, uh, went to the Flint City Council constantly on a constant council meeting. So no one, those that sit on the council want to be on the council. In the city of Flint, none of them can beat my record. I've been an advocate for social justice. I am an advocate for social justice and I love my community and I love the third ward. Okay. okay, what, what makes, makes you qualify to run for a city council seat? Well, I just said that uh, I've been a champion for the people of the city of Flint. I've been the voice for the city of Flint. I was uh, president of the Flint branch of the NAACP, the largest election in the history of the city of Flint. When I ran for uh, the president, I bring people out because I know the issues. I'm not a novice. I'm not a beginner. I'm a stable person, stable in my community, again, because I've been there third, uh, for 30 years, and uh, I know the chart. Okay. So I know the chart. All right. You've been here for a while. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Flint. So what are some of the biggest problems you see Flint facing? Crime, abandoned houses, vacant uh, houses. Uh, vacant lots, tall grass, but one of the greatest, I think, is crime. For the third year in a row, we had the dubious distinction of being the most violent city in the United States of America. Can you imagine that of all the cities in America that has 100,000 or more population? We are little Flint, country town Flint. It's the most violent. Mm -hmm. What are some of the tools you feel like the Flint Police Department are missing to help well, them fight crime? Well, they have a morale issue. It's not very many police officers in the police department. And the powers to be, the outsiders, push a police millage, fire millage on the people and they bought it hook, line, and sinker, thinking that they would get additional police officers. First year, $5.3 million out of that millage. We've got three police officers, and they make about $15 an hour. So they need help. We need more police officers. We need more detectives in the detective uh, bureau. We need updated equipment uh, to track crime and so on and so forth. And so our police department and our uh, fire department, they need help. What are some of the ordinances that you would help create or change? Or what do you feel about the ordinances that are there currently? Well, there's a lot of ordinances that's in the city of Flint. Some of them are antiquated. They just don't fit into this time. And then some of them we need to create some ordinances. You know, I've, as I walked through the third ward and talked to residents, they talked about uh, the pit bulls and the dangerous dogs. We have to strengthen that ordinances. You know, I know, and I'm not against dogs, I'm not against animals, but it has to be strengthened. Uh, you know, your children can't play outside because they see these, the, and they run in packs now. They don't run just by themselves, and so we're going to have to strengthen that. And other ordinances, we're going to have to start enforcing it. But you can't enforce ordinances if you don't have enforcers. And then enforcers are the police department and the fire department. Those are the enforcers of ordinances. They're on the books. They're not enforced. Okay. Um, were you in favor of the street light tax or the Genesee Towers tax? Well, let me say this. That I'm a homeowner. I own my home. 
and I was not in favor of the emergency manager taxing us with street lights, garbage lights, the Genesee Towers gave our money away after we had to pay for it. I'm not in favor of none of that. Well, needless to say, I'm not in favor of the emergency financial manager. Ed Kurtz, Mike Brown, and Darnell Early. And I'm going to say, Darnell Early, you haven't seen anything yet. He'll be worse than Ed Kurtz and Mike Brown. He knows Flint. He was a point official of Flint. And I think he's going to do what they didn't do. And one reason, because he's African American. This is a, a, a black city like Detroit. They put ore over Detroit. Well, we can handle them. I can handle them. Well, he, that's what he, they, they put him over emergency management. But let me tell you this. Remember, he sits on the governor's board that creates emergency manager that looks at cities. And all the cities that's under a takeover, hostile takeover, are black cities. And he sits on that uh, board, shakes his head, gives his approval. So, uh, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not for <laughs> none that's going to uh, raise the taxes on uh, me and my mother and senior citizens, the working poor. No, I'm not in favor of it. Okay. And I will vote if it comes up. Uh, 18, 18 months now, I will vote to kick, kick him out or her out, whoever's in there. I want our back to our form of government. This is a democracy. One person, one vote, and our vote should count. And while we're waiting on the federal courts to make a, a, a ruling of if the uh, EM, the Public Act 436, is uh, right or wrong, we know that it's, it's wrong. And they, they should, should uh, make that uh, decision soon. It's, it's illegal. Okay. The, the county recently considered removing the felony box from his job applications. Do you think this is something that Flint should do? Well, yes. When you when you served your time, that's what you did. You served your time, and and all of us uh, from one, we did something in life that we weren't proud of, and we paid the price. And after you served your time, remove it. It, a, a, lot, a lot of times you have good people that just made a mistake. You know, I use this analogy. If I'm drowning, I don't care who rescues me as long as someone rescues me. And that's the same way I feel that we have good, productive people that have made a mistake and they need to remove it. And one of my uh, uh, goals as Third World Council to have a resource center for those individuals that prison, pardon, or parole that have been in the criminal justice system can come out, get training, and I've already been sitting down meeting with companies uh, that own uh, a heating and air conditioning company, uh, electrical manufacturing companies. I've met with them. We're at the table now saying, hey, listen, when I get elected, uh, this is what I want. I want, I want you to train, and we can get the money for that. If we can get the money for, for building prison, we certainly can get the money for training uh, individuals that uh, was incarcerated that came out. And guess what? If they don't get a job, it's called recidivation. They're going to go back to what they did because there's nothing out here to assist and to help them. Okay. All right. Now, did you participate in Imagine Flint? In my mind, I imagined Flint. Yeah, I participated in it, and I think I was a, I was, a, they didn't agree with me, because I imagine what, you know what, where I imagine Flint and the people on the north end and the third ward imagine Flint, it's not like the people that downtown that don't live in Flint, and that's where imagine Flint came from, stakeholders that do not live in Flint. They don't live in, so I don't imagine having a, what we call green space. Listen, I live on Rankin Street. I got a street full of green space. It's called vacant lots that the grass is four, five feet tall. And when they tear down these homes, they're not going to rebuild. They're saying, well, let's put some farms there. Let's put some gardens there. Let's grow some tomatoes. Let's grow some uh, uh, collard greens. Listen, that, that's nothing. That is nothing. And it's on the third ward. And most of the green space is in the third ward, which is the largest ward in the city of Flint, land ward in the city of Flint. No, I'm not, I'm not for the master plan. 
All right. Speaking of your ward being one of the largest wards, do you think my one is the largest? Being the largest right. ward, do you think we should shrink Flint? No. These are cold words. No, we we shouldn't shrink Flint. I don't care if it's uh, three houses on on the street. Let the three houses, uh, let the individual residents, let them live in their house. They worked 40 years, 30 years to pay for a house. They're not going to get the value of the, of, of the house that was valuable to them. And the little money that they would get if the city or somebody borrowed them out, they couldn't go buy the house. So, no, I'm not, I'm not uh, shrinking Flint so we can have nine wards and we shrink the five wards and we have five wards. Next thing you know, uh, the uh, charter will be changed, they'll be at large, and so we won't see people uh, of diversity on the city council. I believe in nine council person, and they represent the nine wards. And the fathers of the charter was not stupid. They saw this day coming. Speaking of the charter, do you think it needs to be revised? It needs to be tweeted. It needs to be some, some tweeting. And if they tweet it, I think it'll be okay. It's just like you say in the Constitution. Constitution of the United States. It'd be tweeted. Mm -hmm. They had amendments. Mm -hmm. But the, the foundation of it is good. Mm -hmm. You can't do away with the foundation. All right. I have one more question for you. Do you feel like council members should be trained? Well, I think uh, there's nothing wrong with training. If you taught school or any profession, it's called continuing education. So, so it's nothing, nothing wrong with continuing education. education. I don't I think, think it should be predicated. It's something that you should want to do. If you want to do, it shouldn't have anything to do with if you don't do it, uh, you'll be penalized. No, it's continuing education. I, I love to continue education. And I love to hear what other people are doing in other cities. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with knowledge. Nothing nothing, knowledge, knowledge is power. Yes, it is. The Bible said my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Okay. Well, I enjoyed my interview with you, Mr. Dumas. Thank you. I want you to look at the camera and let the viewers know why they should vote for you in November. Again, I need your support November the 5th to vote for A.C. Dumas. I'm an activist. I'm a community activist. I'm an advocate for social justice. I care about the people of the Third War. I care about the senior citizens, which are the backbone of the third ward in the city of Flint. And I really uh, think that the third ward deserves better. We don't need lip service, we need life service. And we need to throw out the lifeline. And that's what I'm here to do, throw out the lifeline. And I want to be partners. I don't want to do this uh, by myself. The, uh, my theme is moving forward together. We're better together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dumas. And we'll be back.